Hello and welcome to WePC. My name is Jack and in this video I'm going to make your GPU faster. Well, technically. And it does involve a little bit of a faff, but it's worth it trust me. Don't click away. What isn't a faff however is clicking that like button if you enjoy the video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our great content and I'm literally going to be giving you free FPS. Who else does that? All you're going to need for this is a DLSS compatible GPU as this is essentially a DLSS swap tutorial. DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, has been all the rage for a while now. The reason being the fact it offers some very substantial performance gains without too much of an impact on visual fidelity. However, there is one little issue. Not all DLSS was created equal. And when it comes to games, all DLSS implementations are different and usually don't get updated from the implementation the game was using during development, or maybe a few versions after. Unless, of course, DLSS was added to the game after release, Slight Rust, or Doom Eternal. If only there was a way to manually switch the DLSS implementation a game uses to a much later version. Oh, wait, there is, and I'm here to show you how to do it, and what sort of experience you're going to get out of it. Games with DLSS implementations ship with a file that determines the DLSS version the game is going to use, and the great thing about files is they can be changed. There's a database on Tech Power Up that hosts all DLL files for every major iteration of DLSS to date, and programmer Breedamore has created an amazing little tool called DLSS Swapper. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. This swapper makes it really simple to swap DLSS versions on your favorite games. So we start off by installing the DLSS Swapper. Just one small issue is the swapper lacks the proper certificates and Windows won't allow it to be installed. There is a way around this, however. As long as you trust Brad Moore, we need to import and trust this certificate. Brad outlined all the easy to follow steps, but I'll go quickly over it with you now. Firstly, navigate to Breedamore's GitHub page and select the install instructions. Download the sign-in certificate at the top of the page, run it by either clicking it straight from your browser or dragging it to your desktop, whichever you prefer. Now when the certificate install window appears, click on the install certificate button at the bottom. When you meet the certificate import wizard, you want to select the second option, which is local machine, under store location. Now select the place all certificates in the following store checkbox and click browse. In the certificate store box, scroll down until you see trusted people. Highlight it and click OK. This is what your final certificate import summary should look like. If not, go back and check the steps you took. All that's left to do now is click finish. Now to install DLSS Swapper itself. All you need to do is run the application from wherever you downloaded it to and install as you would any other Windows app. Note that the trusted app certificate is now visible. Please note that DLSS Swapper is an early build and there may be some bugs or handy features not yet integrated. There is an option to submit feature ideas inside DLSS Swapper, however, if you think you have a good idea for a feature. So inside the DLSS Swapper then, you can see all the games that you have installed. There's no filter as of yet that filters out any of the non-DLSS games. You can, however, tell a game that uses DLSS by noting the DLSS version number at the bottom of the game. And unfortunately, as of the time this video was made, DLSS Swapper only pulls games from Steam and cannot from anywhere else. Inside the download tab, we have a link to that tech power up page we mentioned earlier. To download a new DLSS version, all you have to do is select the desired DLSS version from this page within the swapper and then select the server to download from. The swapper will then download the version to the correct location. All you then have to do is to select extract from the right hand side. And that's it, you're done. You have installed a new DLSS version. All you have to do to select a new DLSS version is to click on any game you like with DLSS support and pick a DLSS version from the drop down box. Once you're happy with your selection, click update and watch the version change before your very eyes. As you can guess, when swapping a DLSS version, sticking to the same major revision of DLSS is going to be the more stable option. But if you want to get frisky and do some experimenting, you can. You can always reset the version using the reset button if something goes wrong. So let's load up some games and see what we can deduce. Monster Hunter World first, and the base version the game ships with is DLSS 1.1.13.0. And you can see we get around a 47 FPS average in 4K, compared to an average of 32. Using the DLSS swapper to force Monster Hunter World to use DLSS 2.1.50, we can get an FPS average of 76, with some visual quality improvements. Shadow of the Tomb Raider next, 
and this is shipped with DLSS version 1.0.17. And as you can see here, the image is very blurry and aliased here at 1080p. This is disgusting, and it's like looking at an oil painting. But don't worry, I managed to convince Laura Croft here to accept DLSS version 1.1.6, and this is a much improved version of DLSS. And as you can see here in the comparison, the image is night and day. So not only do you get free FPS, you also get improved image clarity. There are some issues, however, within certain games, mainly online games like Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 completely disallowing DLSS to be enabled after I swapped it out for an updated version. This will be down to the game's inbuilt anti-cheat, detecting some file tampering and disabling the file, taking the DLSS feature off us completely. It's okay though, once I use the DLSS swapper's reset feature, Battlefield plays nice with DLSS once again. All is not lost. This is an important point to note. Most games have an upper and lower limit. What these limits are depend on the game itself. The lower limit is most likely determined by what iteration of DLSS the game was being developed with. The game would have then shipped with a more up-to-date version. This is why most games with DLSS present in their development cycle can usually handle a few versions below the version they release with. Exactly the same with upper limits. There will be a version so far ahead of the game that the game just ends up not knowing what to do with the data it's being given. You have motion vectors, AI trained temporal upscaling, sharpening filters and many other working parts in later DLSS versions. All data, lesser versions of DLSS don't know how to handle. That's about it for us. We strongly encourage you to go out, get DLSS Swapper and experiment with different game versions. Thank you very much for watching guys. Please hit the like and subscribe if we helped you out at all and want to stay up to date on our latest and greatest content. Also, you should really join our Discord where lots of fun stuff happens. This has been Jack from WePC. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.